In this video, I'm going to talk about stacks and queues. What is a stack? A stack is a data structure represented by a stack or pile in which insertion and deletion of items takes place at one end called the top of the stack. At the same end, push is to insert and pop is used to remove data. Stacks follow last in first style or lethal methodology. This means that items that are stored last will be removed first. Now let's look at the illustration. In the stack, at the very beginning, we have an item, item number one. We push item 2 in. Now, in the stack, we have 1 and 2, and we push 3 in. So that we have 1, 2, and 3 in the stack. And we continue doing the same thing, pushing 4 in. So that we have one, two, three, and four in the stack. And we continue doing the same thing, pushing five in, and then pushing six in. So eventually we have uh, six items in the stack. Item one is at the bottom of the stack. And item six, is at the top of the stack. And then later, we start popping out items from stack. Item 6 is at the top of the stack, so it is popped out first. And the rest is 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And next, we pop out uh, item number five because item number five is now at the top of the stack. And the rest is one, two, three, and four. We continue this model again and again until the last item in the stack is item one. How can we implement stacks in Python? Stacks can be implemented as a class or can be as simple as a list or array. Remember, in uh, Python, an array is actually uh, a list. So in order to push an item to a stack, we use the append method. So if we have a list, namely s, we just need to call the append method of s, saying s dot append, and give it uh, e, which is the item to be pushed into the stack. And that would push the element onto the stack, onto the top of the stack. S at negative 1 would retrieve the element at the top of the stack or uh, you can say at the uh, uh, very end of the list. But it does not remove the item or the element from the stack. As pop, as dot pop, here we call the pop method of the uh, list. This method removes and returns the element at the top of the stack. So uh, I'll be careful with those. S at negative one does not remove, but S uh, dot pop removes 
the uh, item or element at the top of the stack. And if we want to test if the length of the stack is zero or not, then we say len use the len function len of s is equal to zero right, with two equal um, signs. And this test if the stack is empty or not. Let's look at an example. We print a linked list in a reversed order in this example. The name of the uh, function is print linked list in reverse. We give it the uh, parameter of the argument, namely hat. So hat is the first node in the linked list. Right, so hat is the first node in the linked list. Right, this is, for example, hat and hat point to the next node and the next node is this turn point to another next node etc until uh, the last node and we are given uh, this we are given the head node the first node in the linked list so in the function we start we initialize node as an empty array or an empty list. So if or while, let's say while hat is not empty, so this we have a loop here, then as long as hat is not empty, we repeat this. We append nodes from the linked list again and again to um, the list or the array right, to, to the uh, uh, list namely nodes and then we have to move on we have to move on to the next node in the linked list right, we move on um, and move on through the loop again and again. Otherwise, we would uh, add the same node uh, in every iteration. So we do, we do so um, until we reach uh, the end of the linked list. So once we reach the end of the linked list, we have added all the nodes, all the nodes in the linked list to the stack. The stack here is actually a list or an array, namely nodes. Now we have another uh, loop. This loop pops out um, the nodes from the stack. So we pop out, we pop out the one on the top. That would go first, right? Pop it out first. This one, this one is the very last node in the linked list, right? And the second last node in the linked list would be the second uh, on the top of the stack. That one would be popped out later, and again and again until we pop out the first or the, uh, the first node in the linked list, which is the head. Right? Doing it this way, uh, we are able to uh, print the list of the nodes in the reversed order. And here, uh, for your uh, convenience, I also uh, have the class list node that describes uh, the uh, structure of um, the list node. And uh, rep R, right? 
representation yep, or returns the printable representation of the object. This allows you to print uh, notes easily. And the time and space complexity is ON. And here is the number of nodes. And ON here is because you have to loop through um, N nodes right, N times right, in order to add them to the, to the stack. And also N times uh, later to pop them out from the stack. So basically, you have n uh, for pushing in and n for popping out. So uh, there's still uh, n, right? Still n because two n is basically still uh, n, n because uh, um, it's a constant. Now we talk about queues. What is a queue? A queue is a data structure in which insertion and deletion of items takes place at both ends. One end is always used to insert data, or we uh, call it the operation end queue. And the other end is used to remove data, or we call that operation DQ. Queues follow the first in first style of FIFO methodology, which means that items that are stored first will be removed first. Now let's look at the uh, illustration for FIFO methodology. The queue starts with one element, which is element one. Then we uh, in queue two in the queue. At the second step, the queue contains uh, one and two. We put um, element three in. And then after this, uh, in, in the queue we have one, two, and three. And then we continue uh, putting four in. We continue in this pattern until we have six elements in the queue. So next, we start um, uh, dequeuing uh, items from the queue. So for inserting items uh, to the queue, we insert from the back of the queue. We insert from the back of the queue. Always go to the back of the queue. But when we dequeue items from the queue, we take item from the front of the queue. So, uh, Doing so, then item one would be dequeued first. And the rest contains uh, two, three, four, five, and six. Six is at the back of the queue, and two is in front of the queue. So next, if we continue dequeuing, then two is going to be dequeued. And following uh, the same pattern, we dequeue three, four, and five, and the last item is six. 
So 6 uh, was enqueued uh, last, uh, so that uh, uh, later uh, decues the last as well. And one was and queues first, so uh, it is uh, later uh, decued first. Queues can be based on collections dot queue class. So in order to use uh, the uh, dequeue class, uh, you have to import uh, collections. Uh, the first thing is your code. Queue dot append. Uh, you call the append method and give it an item. This pushes an element on the top of the queue. Q0, Q0 retrieves the element at the front of the queue, but does not remove. And Q at negative 1 retrieves the, the element at the back of the queue. Q dot pop left, and we call the pop left method, to removes and returns the element. Okay. at the front of the queue. Queue can be also based on queue.queue class. And in order to use the queue class, you will need to import queue, the first thing in your code. So calling the put method of uh, a queue, namely queue, a queue dot put e pushes an element onto the queue. If you want to check if the queue is empty or not, then uh, use queue dot empty. This returns true if the queue is empty. Queue dot get using the get method, would remove and return the element at the front of the queue. Now let's look at an example of Python code for queue. The class name is queue. In the constructor, namely init, um, we initialize data or um, more exactly self dot uh, underscore data as an empty list and self here refers to the newly uh, created object based on this class For NQ, we have a list of arguments, self and x. x here is the element uh, to be enqueued. So for uh, enqueuing, uh, we just need to call the append method and if it's the element or the item uh, to be enqueued. For uh, the queuing, we return the uh, item on the top. I'm sorry, uh, we re return the item uh, at the front of the queue by uh, calling uh, the pop method and give it uh, zero, pop zero, meaning we pop the first item. Another uh, method, namely max, max return uh, the max item in a queue. Max and give it uh, the data, which is actually a list. 
and this will give the max item um, in uh, the data. And this item has the uh, time complexity of uh, ON because uh, uh, programmatically uh, you will need to loop through all the items, right, N items, uh, in order to find out what would be the max item. <coughs> 